hello hello welcome back to another video my name is Gemma and today we're going to be talking about the 12 books that I am going to prioritize in 2023 so I did do this last year I did a list of priority books and series so we're going to start with those and then I've picked 12 books out for 2023 which are 100% booktube inspired so I've picked up books that I either have on my shelf or on my e-reader or on audio that I already own that people have been raving about this year uh, that I really want to get to next year because I think they're going to be really good and if they're not then sad times so let's start let's start with the the list from last year shall we so I had a list of 10 uh, sort of standalone ish books uh, there was the kite runner this is now like an ongoing joke I did not read that I really really need to read it in 2023 but it is on my um, 100 book bucket list challenge list again so next year next year uh, then I had girl woman other which I did read with the lovely Jolene from bookworm adventure girl uh, gone girl by Gillian Flynn didn't get to that that's been on my TV so long I'm just not in the mood for it so yeah we'll just we'll just bury it I'm just gonna bury that one then there was The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue, which I did read. I had that one with the lovely uh, Rosie Cockshut. Uh, so yeah, and that was a five-star read, so happy days. Then Incendiary by Chris Cleave, uh, which I was supposed to be re buddy reading with Heather from Reading with a Vengeance, and I managed like 12 pages. Being DNF'd, so for the sake of this list, yes, I've done it because I DNF'd it and it's gonna go and uh, live somewhere else. Mm. Yeah, we'll talk about this one in a bit more detail in my wrap up. Then there was Far From the Madding Crowd, which again I read. That was a buddy read with Emily from No Thou Novels. Loved it. Who doesn't love Hardy? And then there was Convenience Store Women by Saka Maratta. Again, read it. This is very unlike me. <laughs> so maybe I should just set like yearly TBRs. Maybe that's like the way forward because I actually read most of the books. <laughs> However, monthly TBRs don't go quite so well, do they? Then there was Wolf Hall by Hilary Rantel, which I did read. Uh, Intimations by Zadie Smith, which I didn't read. And if I'm honest, I forgot it was even on the list. Uh, and that is a set of uh, six essays. So I don't know why I haven't read that because it's like definitely my jam. But yeah, I didn't get to that. And then there was The Humans by Matt Haig, which I also DNF'd. But obviously for the sakes of this list, that's a tick. So seven out of 10, seven out of 10. That's, I think that is, we're gonna call that a success. However, I did also indicate some series, some series that I wanted to finish and some series that I wanted to continue. And uh, spoiler alert, this did not go quite so well. <laughs> so um, I wanted to finish the Brown Sisters trilogy. I only have the last one to read. At your age, Eve Brown. Nope, didn't read that. And then I wanted to finish the Dave Bad trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. I've read one, I read the, uh, the middle one, Kingdom of Copper, uh, and loved it. No. Was Kingdom of Copper? Yes. Um, but I haven't got to Empire of Gold yet, even though I really, really want to because I love, love, love the series. Um, but they're quite chunky and I get distracted. Um, and then there was the Broken Earth trilogy, of which I've read the first one. And uh, yeah, no, I didn't read any from that series. Not a one. So yeah. Um, and then the series that I wanted to continue, there was the Earth Children's in series by Jean M. All of only read the first one, Clan of the Cave Bear, which I adored, five stars. Didn't pick up the second one. Um, and that is like a six book series. And then the Seven Sisters uh, series which by, by Lucinda Riley. I've read the first one, um, which I think is called The Seven Sisters, uh, but I haven't picked up the second one. And I think the final one is coming out next year, which is about past salt and is co-written um, with her son because unfortunately Linda, Lucinda Riley died uh, last year. Um, but I think the book was more or less finished. So her son just finished it up and did all the edits and stuff is my understanding. But no, is is I've gone off on a tangent, but no, I haven't, um, no, I haven't read any more from that series. So I, I failed on every single one I put on that list. So we're not doing series goals next year because clearly I can't stick to them, so. And uh, if you know me, you know that I'm, I'm very well um, endowed with commitments already for next year. So I don't, I don't feel like I need to put series 
on there as well. Um, but I am going to put 12 books on. As I say, all of these are inspired by booktubers, so these books will have turned up either in their mid-year freakout tag or in their sort of best books of the year so far video. So let's talk about the books, shall we? So the first book, which I really can't put off any longer because otherwise my friendship with this person is at risk. <laughs> and that is Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Dua. Um, so this is like Alice from Alice and the Giant Bookshelf's favourite book of the year. She's been raving about it since she read it, which was in like March, April, like early on, early doors. This came out of the stable and nothing has knocked it off the top spot. And I picked it up. Charlie maybe pick it up because he likes clouds and it's got a cloud on the cover. And I very much trust Alice's judgment. However, Anthony Doerr's previous book, um, All the Light We Cannot See, I did not love. Uh, I thought it was quite dull. So I'm, I'm a bit trepidatious to pick this up in case I hate it. And then uh, me and Alice will have to part ways. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> but I do really really want to get to this and see um, what the hype is about so that's the first one then the next book on the list comes highly recommended uh, by Emily at Novel Novels it was one of her favorite books of the year and has been many many people's favorite books of the year um, but I picked it particularly off her shelf and that is Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart uh, I don't think this needs any introduction following a young boy in Scotland with an alcoholic mother, I believe. And just everybody loves this book. And I still haven't got to it. I, look, I clearly have it in hardback. Uh, so I've had it since it was released and it won the book in 2020. We're now going into 2023. Even someone at work tried to give me this book because he'd read it and said it was amazing. He was like, Jamie, you'll love this. I was like, yeah, I know. I've got it on my shelf. <laughs> So yeah, this one is going on the list for 2023. And then moving to a booktuber who I really value for her fantasy recommendations. And this is a booktube darling anyway, but it's the Mistborn series, which is uh, recommended by Ellie over at Bibbidi Bobbidi Books. Uh, Ellie is just such a genuinely lovely person. Um, and she talked about this series as one of the ones that she's really enjoyed this year and so I really really want to get to it uh, by Brandon Sanderson I think everybody um, has probably heard of this series I don't really know too much about it I think it's a magic system with metals uh, epic fantasy there's like a million books in the Cosmere world um, and more to come so I kind of need to I need to crack on really before I'm so far behind I'll never catch up um, but yes the first book in this particular trilogy is The Final Empire then another series recommendation and this time from the lovely Shelley at Shelley Swearingen and that is Bring Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantel. Um, Shelley talked about this book in her um, Midyear Freak Out tag I think as like best sequel. Sh Shelley doesn't read loads and loads of series but she has highly recommended at least the first and second book in this series. I know The Mirror and the Light, the third one, doesn't have the best reputation, um, but this one is sort of hailed as the best of the three, and I really want to get to it because I loved Wolf Hall and I loved Hilary. <laughs> and I love Hilary Mantel's writing. So, um, yeah, so this is going on the priority list for next year. And then finally, a book that was recommended by my good friend Jem at Bookish Gems, and also very recently by Jack at Spread Book Joy, she's been wanging on about it, and that is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. So this is like a cosy fantasy um, about an orc that sets up a coffee shop. <laughs> Just everybody is raving about this book, and my husband bought it for me for my birthday, and so I'm gonna give it a go. I think this author also has some another book due out next year, so I'd really like to get ahead of the curve, but I'm getting sort of um, House in the Cerulean Sea, vibes from this sort of just like cozy fantasy which uh there are times in your reading life when you just need cozy fantasy there are uh and so this is going on the list also so those are all the physical books the ebooks that i um am hoping to get to oh god i'm getting old so the first one has been recommended by jack at spread book joy she actually did a short i think on this really recently so if i can find that and link it i will link it below uh, and that is a pinch of magic by michelle harrison this is a four book series though i think they do broadly stand alone i might be making that up but this is a middle grade fantasy series that jack raves about she talked about it last year but i think she's i think she may have read all four now and so i'd really just like to get to it uh because jack just does the best children's book recommendations so 
yes. Then a recommendation from Nikki at Red Dot Reads and that is This Tenderland by William Kent Kruger. This again is another book that's got a lot of love this year. I know that uh, Jolene at Bookworm Adventure Girl and AJ Dunn at AJ Dunn Reads and Writes have also really enjoyed this book this year uh, or at least Kent Kruger's general repertoire so uh, yeah I really want to get to that and that is on my Kindle. Next up we have Matrix by Lauren Groff which has had mixed reviews but did come highly recommended by Jen at Jen the Librarian. If you don't follow Jen oh she's so good she gives so many good recommendations and she's one of those people who um, it's just really cozy and comforting to sit and listen to she's um yeah she's just delightful if you're not following her she'll be linked below um but oh, love her channel uh but yes she really liked matrix by lauren groff and this is about like lesbian nuns i think i don't know any more than that that's all i know i think that's all i need to know uh so i will be picking that up also in 2023 now a book that hasn't had a lot of hype um but was recommended by the lovely Becky at Teacup the Storyteller who gives very good recommendations and is one of my favourite humans and that is I May Be Wrong by Bjorn Nathiua Lindbold Blad? Lindblad? Oh, that was badly done um, um, but this is about a forest monk who um, I think he gives up life in the monastery to start a family and then he sort of changes again I'm not quite sure but Becky said it's fantastic and I have that on Kindle and so I really want to try and get to that. And then we have probably the booktuber that I followed for the longest amount of time since before I was a booktuber myself uh, and that's Simon Savage and in his sort of top books of the year so far was You Made a Fall Out of Death with Your Beauty by Akweke Emeze. I am still to read any Emeze books which shame on me uh, but he did recommend this one and it has been getting quite a lot of hype it is a romance which is not generally my thing but I have been told I have been assured that you don't have to be a romance lover to uh, get on with this book so and then we move on to books that I've got on audio the first of which is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Azeki which was recommended by Scott at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot now me and Scott I would say 80% of the time agree on books when we don't agree on books we really do not agree on books so i'm i've got my fingers crossed because i dnf'd ruth Zeki's uh women's prize winning novel uh the form of the book of form of emptiness earlier this year i just couldn't get on with it but he said i would probably like her other work uh he did actually recommend a different one specifically for me the meets one i can't remember what it's called but this is the one of I, I already own so I'm going to try a tale for the time being also Kim at middle of the book March is hosting a um, book club and this is her first pick for January I will leave her announcement video below if anyone's interested in joining so it seemed like the perfect opportunity so this will probably be the first one that I pick up in 2023 and then finally a recommendation from like the oracle of literary fiction uh, Eric Carl Anderson and on his list of best books of the year was Love Marriage by Monica Alley. Uh, and I think this is like a people from different cultures getting married. So it wasn't an arranged marriage, it was a love marriage and like the challenges that that throws up. I think I still haven't read Brick Lane by Monica Alley, um, which I know I really need to do. But Eric said this was good. So I audio, I'm audio, so I will be picking that one up. Also, and that's my lovelies is 12 books for 2023 my my 2023 tbr if you will um so yes let me know if you've read any of these if you also recommend them if you don't recommend them don't tell me because then i will probably just put them off for like infinity um but i am hoping that because i've picked books that are recommended by booktubers that i trust their opinions it's going to be a good year it's going to be a good year i'm hoping that this is going to be 12 five star reads that uh won't let me down so no pressure booktubers no pressure maybe i'll do a video next year like ranking how how similar my taste is to these booktubers we'll see we'll see let's not commit to anything else Gemma. all of the people that i've talked about today will be linked below you should absolutely go and check them out because they have fabulous recommendations and are just generally fabulous people um and if you missed my 100 book bucket list challenge books that i'm going to be reading whoo 
don't say that when you're drunk. Uh, but I'll leave that here and I'll catch you all very soon with another one. Bye guys. <laughs>